so guys we will now be starting unit 2 and 3 before i do that uh, if you go through my notes you will find that at the end of unit 1 i have given some extra notes as well well those are based on 12th national income accounting so i urge all of you to go through those notes as well other than that i have also given 10 year questions based on unit 1 that too you should be going through and if you find any doubts you can contact me at my number through a whatsapp now we shall be starting unit 2 and 3 well guys our first topic is what is money well money is a matter of functions for medium major standard and store well anything can be regarded as money if it performs medium of exchange function if it is used to measure value if it can be used for making deferred payments and if it can also be used as a store of value that is its value should not deteriorate with the passage of time so money is a matter of functions for medium major standard and store as our next topic is types of money primarily there are two types of money one is fiat money and the second is commodity money well fiat means the command so fiat money is that money which is accepted as money because government says so in other words, fiat money is that money which is accepted as money on the fiat or decree or the command of the government. For example, if you have got a 2000 rupee note, you are accepting it as money because government says so. Agar aap usko deface kar dein, usme se chandi ki tar nikal dein, to uske 5 rupee bhi nahi milenge. That means it doesn't have any commodity value. So money that has no intrinsic value is called fiat money. It is accepted as money by government decree, for example, paper currency. On the other hand, money with some intrinsic value is called commodity money, for example, gold. Well, guys, even if you don't use gold as money, you can use it for various purposes like dental filling, jewelry. So a money which can be used as commodity as well, if not used as money, is called, is called as commodity money. Our next topic is evolution of fiat money. Well, imagine an economy where people carry gold to purchase articles. If the seller is convinced about the purity and weight, the transaction will be completed. Ek example lete hai. Suppose ek gaon hai, jahan par koi bhi agar aapko saman lena hai, to aapko sone ke sikke dene padenge. To suppose aap sabzi lene gaye, aur aapne jab sabzi order ki, to sabzi wale ne bola ki aapko itne gold coins dene padenge. To aapne wo gold coins de diye. Par आपको सब्जी वाला काफी टाइम लगा के वो सब्जी दे रहा है रीजन वो चेक करना चाह रहा है वेदर जो आपने गोल्ड कॉइंस दिए हैं उनका वेट प्रॉपर है या नहीं है या वो प्योर है या नहीं है सो डोंट यू थिंक इट इज क्वाइट अ वेस्टेज ऑफ टाइम सो गवर्नमेंट यहां क्या कर सकती है सो सिंस इट टेक्स टाइम टू वेरीफाई द प्योरिटी एंड मेजर करेक्ट क्वांटिटी द गवर्नमेंट कैन मिंट गोल्ड कॉइंस ऑफ नॉन प्योरिटी एंड वेट गवर्नमेंट ये कह सकती है कि हम गोल्ड जो कॉइन है वो मिंट करके देंगे जिसमें प्योरिटी और वेट पूरा मेंशन होगा जिस पर आप लोग विश्वास कर सकते हैं डोंट यू थिंक इट विल सेव अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम नाउ सपोज की ट्रांजेक्शन्स काफी बड़ी हैं for example kisi ko ghar lena hai for example kisi ko bahut badi zameen leni hai so don't you think gold coins mein agar wo transactions karenge to it will require a lot of bags of gold coins to is problem ke sath ab log government ke paas gaye aur bole ki bhai agar bahut badi transactions karni hoti hai to hame bahut mushkilat hoti hai itne sara gold ko itne sare gold coins ko carry karna to government ne ye bola ki aap hame apne sare gold coins de do हम आपको बदले में उसके लिए पेपर रिसीट दे देंगे सर्टिफिकेट सॉर्ट ऑफ सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट स्टेप फॉर द गवर्नमेंट इज टू एक्सेप्ट गोल्ड फ्रॉम द पब्लिक इन एक्सचेंज फॉर गोल्ड सर्टिफिकेट पीसेस ऑफ पेपर दैट कैन बी रिडीम फॉर अ सर्टेन क्वांटिटी ऑफ गोल्ड इसमें गवर्नमेंट ये कहती है कि जिसके पास भी ये रिसीट्स होंगी वो जब चाहे हमारे पास आए और गोल्ड ले ले बदले का तो आप बताइए आपने गोल्ड किस लिए यूज़ करना था ट्रांजेक्शन के लिए तो अब आप पीसेज ऑफ पेपर जो है वो ट्रांजेक्शन के लिए यूज़ कर रहे हैं सो नाउ दीज पेपर्स विल बी इजियर टू यूज़ इन ट्रांजेक्शन इवेंचुअली नो वन कैरीज गोल्ड अराउंड एट ऑल तो ये जो रिसिट है बेटा ये जो पेपर है यही बन गई पेपर करेंसी या फीएट मनी दैट्स हाउ फीएट मनी इवॉल्ड our next topic is how the quantity of money is controlled well the quantity of money in an economy is called money supply we will take the money as fiat money because that is the most prevalent one well it is controlled by a central bank of the country through open market operation a word of caution most of the people assume that the central bank is only one well especially indian students they think that uh, you know there is only one central bank because they have one as rbi well there can be more than one central bank as well as in case of usa popularly known as federal reserve well usa have 12 central banks so the functions may be same but the number may not be 
now you have also you know uh, you you know that there are many measures to control money supply like bank rate crr slr they all are there but the most important function is still the open market operation so if the central bank wants to pump money in the economy they will buy you know uh, you know bonds from the open market so that it can increase the money supply in, in the economy and vice versa now guys we have got the most important topic of unit 2 fisher's quantity theory of money i would urge everybody to have a detailed look at this particular theory as it is one of the most important topics of unit 2 fisher's quantity theory of money now guys i will tell you or teach you rather fisher's quantity theory of money well guys uh, it's more of an identity rather than a theory so let us start m into v is equal to p into t we need to keep this equal all the time m here stands for money supply v stands for velocity p stands for price and t stands for transaction let me give you one example suppose the total money supply in an economy is 10 v we don't know i shortly tell you what velocity is all about suppose the price of uh, each good is 0.5 and there are total 60 transactions so may i say Guys, with the help of this data, an imaginary data, my velocity is going to be 3. Now, you must be eager to know what is velocity. Well, guys, velocity actually refers to a statement or a phenomena which tells us how many times money changes hands. So, velocity refers to a phenomena which says how many times money changes hands. So this Fisher's quantity theory of money is based on this notion which says m into v is equal to p into t where m is money supply, v is velocity, p is price and t is transactions. Now the modern version of this theory says that you should be taking y instead of t. So we have got two questions here. First, why? The answer is there are two reasons. First, t may include second hand transactions or second hand goods transactions which we want to avoid right guys t stands for transaction and if we take transactions it may include second hand transactions which we want to uh, avoid so first reason is that t may include a second hand transactions second don't you think transactions or the amount of transactions may be quite large so to actually have an account of all the transaction can be really cumbersome my second question is why with why so okay you are telling me replace t with why why uh, you've given me the reasons as well but now my question is why i should be replacing t with y only so the answer is because they both that is t and y are roughly proportional to each other what do we mean by that t and y are roughly proportional to each other what do we mean by that well guys if output or income is more transaction will be more if transactions are more output will also be more so guys now we have m into v is equal to p into y suppose i put some values 10 into 3 is equal to 0.5 into 60 now we will make certain changes for example i'm now gonna write m into v bar is equal to p into y now v bar implies that i have assumed that velocity is constant y well as we know that velocity refers to how many times money changes hands well don't you think that should depend upon the consumption habits of the people and under short run there is no harm in assuming that the consumption habits of people under short run do not change so that's why we take v as v bar now if i take 10 into 3 is equal to 0.5 into 60 and suppose i increase money supply from 10 to 20 keeping this as constant either this is gonna happen or either this is gonna happen or you can actually see a change in both price and output too in order to keep both sides equal well guys this p into y is known as nominal gdp so you must understand that if money supply increases it will increase nominal gdp now there is one more thing 
m into v bar is equal to p into y bar. So we are keeping y also as constant. This is an important concept now. See, we assume that y is a function of capital and labor and both capital and labor have been utilized fully. So y is thus a function of k bar and l bar. Therefore, y is equal to y bar. So that's why we keep that y constant. So now we are actually closing in and we are actually going to tell you the basic basic funda or basic content or basic conclusion of Fisher's quantity theory of money. Let's crack it. Suppose this is 10 into 3, this is 0.5 into 60. Now suppose you increase money supply from 10 to 20, this being constant, this being constant, don't you think price must increase? So what is the catch? Well, the Fisher's quantity theory suggests that if you increase money supply, your price will increase. If you increase money supply, your price will increase. Thus, we see there is a direct relationship between money supply and price. Not only that, if you increase money supply, your price will increase, but that too in the same proportion. So, not only there is a direct relationship between money supply and price, but there is a proportionate relationship as well. So guys, our next topic is what is Senorage? Well, in order to explain Senorage, let us first discuss some key things. Now you have seen the Fisher effect that when we increase money supply, the inflation will increase. Money supply will increase, the prices will increase. So if it happens, then why does the money supply in the economy increase? Is the government not sense that if we increase the money supply, then the inflation will increase? So let's start with this concept. देखिए एवरी गवर्नमेंट नीड्स मनी फॉर इट्स एक्सपेंडिचर और तीन सोर्सेज हैं गवर्नमेंट के पास मनी प्राप्त करने के पहला वो टैक्सेस के थ्रू ले सकते हैं दूसरा वो आपसे बोरो करके ले सकते हैं या दे कैन प्रिंट मनी सो द रेवेन्यू रेज बाय प्रिंटिंग मनी इज कॉल्ड अ सेनो रेज तो देखिए अगर गवर्नमेंट डेफिसिट में और उन्हें पैसा चाहिए तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वो ट्राई करेंगे कि टैक्सेस बढ़ाएं तो अगर पब्लिक इन जनरल टैक्सेज नहीं दे पा रही है प्रॉपरली रिटर्न नहीं कर पा रही है टैक्स की फॉर्म में पैसा तो गवर्नमेंट को बोरोइंग करनी पड़ेगी बट बोरोइंग भी एवर लास्टिंग तरीका तो नहीं है आप बोरोइंग कैसे करेंगे या तो डोमेस्टिकली या फॉरेन तो अगर डोमेस्टिकली बोरो करेंगे तो आप कैसे करेंगे जैसे इंडिया में इंदिरा विकास पत्र किसान विकास पत्र गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स के थ्रू तो अगर पब्लिक नहीं इंटरेस्टेड उनको खरीदने में तो बोरोइंग भी आपकी फेल हो जाएगी और बाहर से अगर बोरो करते हो तो दे पुट अ लॉट ऑफ रेस्ट्रिक्शन सो अल्टीमेटली गवर्नमेंट इज़ लेफ्ट विद नो अदर ऑप्शन बट टू यू नो प्रिंट मनी एंड दैट प्रिंटिंग मनी बेटा इज कॉल्ड अ सेन रिच एंड इट इज़ ऑल्सो नोन एज इन्फ्लेजन टैक्स जो हम यूनिट थ्री के एंड में प्रूफ भी करके दिखाएंगे बट इन्फ्लेजन टैक्स इसलिए इसको कह रहे हैं कि अल्टीमेटली जैसे ही वो मनी सप्लाई यू नो पुश करेंगे इकॉनमी में बढ़ाएंगे तो इकॉनमी में इन्फ्लेजन आ जाएगी तो डोंट यू थिंक जो भी मनी आपके हाथ में होगी उसकी रियल वैल्यू गिर जाएगी उसकी परचेजिंग पावर गिर जाएगी सो दैट्स वाई दिस कॉन्सेप्ट सेनरेज इज एक्चुअली ऑल्सो नोन एज इन्फ्लेजन टैक्स जो कि हम प्रूफ भी करेंगे यूनिट थ्री के एंड में सो सेनोरेज रेवेन्यू रेज बाय प्रिंटिंग मनी इज कॉल्ड अ सेनो रिच नाउ गाइस आई विल टीच यू फिशर्स इफेक्ट माइंड इट गाइस इट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम फिशर्स क्वांटिटी थ्योरी ऑफ मनी if you remember Fisher's quantity theory of money, it used to say that if you increase money supply, your prices are gonna increase. But my dear friends, Fisher effect is a bit different. Under Fisher effect, we will be talking about I, that is nominal rate of interest. You would remember that from unit 1. R, that is I minus pi, stands for real rate of interest. And R is equal to I minus pi E, that is expected real rate of interest well guys ye sara main unit 1 mein aapko kara chuka hu now guys if you say r is equal to i minus pi to don't you think i should be considered as r plus pi right now guys if i say this is 10 percent this is 2 and this is 8 and just assuming now suppose if an economy in an economy money supply increases by 1 percent Following the Fisher's quantity theory, this should imply that your price will also increase by 1%. Price increase actually is equal to increase in inflation. So don't you think if this inflation that is pi increases, this i must also increase? Well guys, it implies this. So when we talk about Fisher's quantity theory of money, we contain ourselves till here. That is 
uh, in whatever proportion money supply rises, the inflation is going to rise in that proportion. But beta, when we talk about Fischer's effect, it actually extends from money supply towards or till nominal rate of interest. So Fischer effect tells us that if we increase money supply say by 10%, our nominal rate of interest shall also increase by 10%. For example, if I apply this here, it should look something like this. So this is a Fischer's effect. Now, there are two problems with this, this particular thing. The exact explanation, you're going to find this in third semester. But uh, in second semester, I'll, I'll be giving you some idea of that as well. So this is Fischer's effect. Now I'm going to teach you something really interesting. Well, guys, the interest rate determination, which we shall be taking in, you know, next classes, is like this. You must have done this in your college. MD, MS, I. I'll tell you in my next class how these are uh, built. So this is known as a short run thing. Why I am explaining this? Abhi batata. Ab aate long run. Long run here we take nominal rate of interest and here we take time period. Now guys, in the Fisher effect what we saw was ki if we increase money supply our nominal rate of interest rises. And we proved that, right? अब आपको कंफ्यूजन आ सकती है अगर आपने कॉन्सेप्ट ठीक से नहीं सीखा हुआ तो देखिए क्या अब अगर मैं शॉर्ट रन के अंदर मनी सप्लाई बढ़ाता हूं लाइक दिस डोंट यू थिंक रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट तो कम हो रहे वेयर एज फिशर्स क्वांटिटी थ्योरी टेल्स अस कि नहीं अगर आप मनी सप्लाई बढ़ोगे तो रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट बढ़ेगा माइंडेड ये सारा मैं नेक्स्ट लेक्चर में आपको सिखाऊंगा अभी बट अभी के लिए आप खुद सोचिए आपको शॉर्ट रन में दिख रहा है कि मनी सप्लाई बढ़ रहा है रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट कम हो रहा है लेकिन फिशर इफेक्ट कहता है नहीं ये तो बढ़ेगा so this we are going to prove. Mind it, this is long run theory. Hai. This is I. So as the money supply increases, it will dip the rate of interest and then it rises. Uh, in the previous example, it was 10 and it will stop at 11. So whatever money supply you have increased, in our example, we have increased money supply by 1%. So our nominal interest rate rises by 1% uh, as well. Now some people might ask, sir, why this happens? So I will tell you. You tell me, when the ROI is reduced, don't you think investment will increase? Investment is the part of AD, so AD will increase. AD will increase, then the price will increase. You don't think that if the price will increase, then the producers would like to you know, increase supply, so the producers would want more money for that. They would want more money because they want to produce more. Why? Because the prices of their good has increased. So if the producer would, you know, want more money, don't you think they will, you know, pressurize the bank. They will go to the bank and ask for the money. Banks will having limited money. Don't you think they are forced to increase rate of interest? So this is a glimpse where I have told you how it works. But in paper, if you have a Fisher effect, you have to do it back. I have told you to explain it only to understand it. When you are doing this, you have confusion now. The sir has said that money supply is increasing, so the rate of interest is increasing. But here, it is showing that money supply is increasing and the rate of interest is reduced. Mind it, this is short run. And when we talk about Fisher effect, guys, that is a long run phenomenon.